who can tell me what special holiday, what special holy day was Friday? The baptism of Christ, also known as Theophany, sometimes called Epiphany, sometimes called the Feast of Lights. I think in the Orthodox Church, more important a day is, more names we have for it. So it has a lot of names because it's so important. So this is the Sunday that comes after Theophany. And you'll notice that a lot of the hymns that we just heard had to do specifically with the baptism of Christ. So today, I want to talk about two things that were accomplished when Christ was baptized that should help us understand the importance of holy water. Okay? So, one of the reasons why Christ was baptized... Boys, pay special attention to this. I think you're going to think this is awesome. If you look at this icon, Christ in the River Jordan, what is He standing on? What do you see here? It's broken doors in the shape of a cross and what's being squished underneath those doors? Snakes. Christ was baptized to destroy the dragon of the deep. Did you guys know that? Most of us, we're not familiar with Old Testament. We don't listen attentively to the hymns that are chanted at Vespers or at Orthros. But if we do, and if we pay attention to the icon, we learn that in ancient times, the people talked about this dragon of the deep. This great serpent that lived in the depths of the water. That was a devourer that was an embodiment of chaos. What is chaos? Does anyone, can anyone tell me what chaos is? What's chaos? Without order, right? Kind of a big mess. And so this creature, this chaos monster, after the fall was wreaking havoc, and Christ came to restore order, Right? If we think about it, water is something that is necessary for life. Right? As long as the water stays in the stream bed, it stays in order, everything's okay. But if that river overflows, what happens? What happens when a river overflows? The water goes out. There's a word that we call that. Flooding, right? Everybody loves to go to the beach and see the ocean. It's beautiful. The waves, they come and go. But if there's a hurricane or a tsunami, it's chaos. Right? So Christ came to reestablish order. And He symbolically descended into the waters, that symbol of chaos and formlessness to bring order to it. And like I said, water is necessary for life also. And so the meaning for us is that we need to have Christ enter our lives as He entered the waters, that He may set our lives right. That He may set our lives in order. Does that make sense? You'll notice that when we do baptisms, when we bless the holy water, we continue this tradition of bringing order to chaos. There's actually exorcisms that are read over the water to deliver that water from its fallen, fallenness and to restore it to order. And so that's why in the icon we see Christ crushing the heads of the dragons of the deep, restoring order. Another thing that was accomplished by the baptism of the Lord that I think we aren't always so aware of 
is that he came to reorient. Does anybody know what the word orient means? This one's a little bit tricky. It's not a word we hear real often. No, sim, it's kind of the gist of it. So, so orient literally means to face the east, to direct our attention to the east. It's usually used as a way to turn something the right way. Right Before Christ came, life was going in the wrong direction. Life was going to death. Life was going to the nothingness that it came from. But when Christ entered into the waters, the waters of the River Jordan, they actually turned and started to flow the other way. To move from death to life. Right? And so every time we bless the water, we're giving it its proper meaning, its proper purpose. When we use it for baptisms, when we use it to clean not just our faces, but our souls, which is actually the Greek palindrome that's above the door. And so, these two things. One, he came to overcome the chaos. And again, I think that's really cool. He came to destroy the dragon, the chaos monster. He also came to give life its right direction, to move it back from death to life. So what does this have to do with the little bottle of holy water that you have in your homes? Well, this is something I want you guys to pay a special attention to. How many of you have a bottle of holy water in your rooms or at the icon corner at your home? Well, there's going to be holy water bottles available. And I want you guys to make sure that your parents take one home. And what we can do, remember that water is the same water that was blessed by Christ. We pray for the blessing of the River Jordan to come upon that water. Right? So, if we have chaos in our life, if we're upset, if things don't seem to be working out the right way, we can take that holy water and we can drink a little of the holy water. Not because it's a magic potion, but because Christ Himself was present in that water. Christ Himself is the one that's able to calm the storms and the chaos that sometimes happens in our life. In fact, just that taking the time to stop, maybe at the beginning of the day, and sipping a little bit of holy water, also is a way to help orient us, to get our life on the right path, to remember that our life here on earth began not when we were born, but when we were baptized. So if we begin each day with a sip of that holy water, we'll be moving in the right direction. But holy water, it's not just for when our lives seem to be falling apart or seem to be difficult. right? Sickness is also a kind of disorder. We start coming down with a cold or we're not feeling well. Guess what? We can sip a little of that holy water and ask Christ to restore us. How many of you have had a a difficult test in school? Before that test, sip a little holy water. Now, remember, this isn't magic, which means you still have to study. But then Christ and the grace of the Holy Spirit will be present with us. For, For trips, if you're going on a long trip, or you're about to begin a new job, all of these are opportunities for us to connect to Christ through the grace and the power of the holy water. May Christ our God, who was baptized for us in the River Jordan, bless each and every one of you and be with you all.